do you want to distribute your machine learning or deep learning model but at the same time you don't want to distribute your code there are two ways to distribute your deep learning or machine learning model one way is to create an executable file and you can send the file via email via google drive or via usb and the person can use those file in the executable file the benefit is that the person do not need to have an internet connection to use your model for example in this tutorial we are going to see an nlp model and for the nlp model we are going to use nltk in nltk each time you run the model there are certain files which have to be downloaded from the internet once they have been downloaded the next time they are they don't they do not need to be downloaded so you have to consider how to pack these files with your executable files so the user do not have to download the files from of nltk from the internet this is one way the second way is to create api and the user can call your api and can access your model without watch without seeing your code so in this series we are going to see both these approaches for the executable we are going to use py installer and for the api we are going to use fast api but before that we have to train our model we have to create an inference script so let's start with the model training i am going to import pandas and then i am going to display to change some functions or options of the pandas to display the full row let me restart restart runtime okay after the we have imported the pandas we have to read this csv file which i am going to import from the github repository of mine you can find the link in the description of this video the csv file is basically a task of sam event in i believe 2020 and there are three subtasks we are only interested in interested in subtask a which is whether the tweet is offensive or not offensive so i'm going to select the tweet and the subtask and going to rename the label as tweet and label after that i am going to split the data set into test data frame and train data frame now it's the time to do the pre-processing right now we can i can you can see that i have downloaded some of the nltk files such as wordnet stop words omw so these files have are being downloaded in the root of my system i don't know right now I, I i'm not controlling the path where they need to be downloaded they are they are going to be downloaded in their default path so let's download these files these files are basically stop word and or and word net limitizer at this point i'm expecting that you are familiar with basic of natural language processing and machine learning that what are the stop word and what is the limitizer the very important step which you have to keep in mind is the pre-processing this step is important because your pre-processing step should always be the same during the training and during the inference if your pre-processing step is changed during the inference then your result might be incorrect so the first step in my pre-processing is i am lowering the text data the second step is i am removing the digit in the third step i am removing the at the rate of user if you go above and see the tweets you can see there are at the rate of user in the capital but as I have lowered the words, I can use add the rate of user in this mod. Then I'm going to remove the URLs, the punctuations. Once I have removed the punctuation, I'm going to lemmatize the data. Right now, if you don't know what is lemmatization, you can Google and see what is lemmatization, what is stemming. And you can choose one of these two. After that, I'm also going to remove the stop. When I am going to limitize the tweet or the text, first I am going to apply the tokenizer. The tokenizer basically convert my sentence into words. And limitizer take each word and limitize the word. Now instead of a string, I have a list. 
now the tweet cell is containing a list instead of a string. After that, I am looping each word and see if this word exists in stop word or not. If this word exists in stop word, then remove this word. Do not consider this word. If this word didn't is not present in the stop word list, then consider this word. Okay, right now I also have a list of words. Now I'm going to convert this list into string so that I'm so for that I'm going to use join method. It will convert my list into the string. One thing you also make sure that whenever you are applying the preprocessing, you must split your data into train and test before applying any sort of preprocess. This will help you to eradicate some of the error which can lead to the leakage, data leakage and which ultimately result in false results. So I have already split the data into training data frame and the test data frame. Now you can see that my data has been cleaned. Uh, and you can also see that the labels are not offensive and not the offensive of, but the machine learning model or the deep learning model accept the labels in the form of integers like 0, 1, 2. So I have to use label encoder that convert the label into the integer format. You can see that for the training data frame, I'm using fit transform. The label encoder learn the pattern from the training data frame and apply this pattern to the transform data frame. For example, if I apply the fit transform on the test data frame, there are chances that if the not, of, not offensive tweet is labeled as zero in the in this line when I'm applying on training data frame, it can be possible that in the test data frame when I, I apply fit transform, it can be something else instead of having the same label as in the train data frame. This is the reason we only apply the transform on the test data frame. This makes sure that the label conversion remain the same in the train data frame and also in the test data frame. Now I'm going to print the test data frame. You can see not offensive is labeled as zero and offensive is labeled as one. I can also count the occurrence of the offensive and not offensive tweets. You can see that there are 7,000 not offensive tweets in the training data frame and 1,000 and 3,500 offensive tweets in the training data frame. So there is a ratio of 1 ratio 2 or 2 ratio 1 according to the this, one, this shown here. So for this to make it a balanced class, I am using class weight function from the scikit-learn. Scikit-learn has a function class weight which has another function compute class weight which can accept different parameters. The one is whether you want to make the both weights balanced. The second one is classes. I'm taking unique function because I have only two classes 0 and 1. This unique will only have make the let me print this and I can show it in a better way. You can see that there is a whole list of the classes but if i apply numpy.unique on it you can see there are only unique classes so th this is how i can get my level of the classes for the name of the classes okay i haven't defined the numpy yet let me call this one because i'm going to define numpy here and let me run this again you can see it's around it's only zero and one here the next parameter is the label actually. So I'm going to pass the train data frame. Right now consider that you don't have the well test data frame. You only have to apply any processing on the training data frame. Thinking as you don't have the test data frame and the test data frame will be provided in real time. So I'm only using train data frame to get the class weight. This is possible that in test data frame the distribution is different. But right now we don't know because in real time scenarios, the test data frame will be available only in the production. So to the zero class, we have assigned 0 0.75 weightage and to the one class, we have assigned the double weightage because the ratio is two ratio one. After that, I, I have to apply hyperparameter tuning because I can, I can avoid the hyperparameter tuning or only simply apply the logistic regression, but hyperparameter tuning provides the best result. Let me show you the scikit-learn logistic regression function. 
and then we can understand the parameter tuning more clearly. There are different parameters such as penalty, dual, tolerance, C, which is basically the inverse of regularization. If we change these values, we can get different results. So we have to find which values yield the best result. For example, if you turn the dual to true, whether it will give better result, or if we choose the value of C, 10 instead of 1, will it be provide better result. So this is called grid search. For the sake of simplicity, I'm only taking one parameter C for the fine tuning. I can take another parameter solver, but right now I'm ignoring that. This is just for the purpose of understanding. Now you can see that I have defined my grist as logistic regression underscore underscore C. Right? I will explain this in a minute. That how I define the key of the grid parameters. The value of C can be anything for starting from minus infinity or zero to infinity. But let for the sake of simplicity, let I choose some random numbers from one to 25. This can be any number, but larger the grid is the more time it will take to tune the model and better the results are. So this is a trade-off between the time and the result. Another thing is vectorizer. I'm using a count vectorizer which I'm also going to show you in this scikit-learn documentation. This is basically convert a collection of text, text document to a matrix of tokens count. Actually count the number of words in a corpus and create a matrix of digits. So right now we have the text, but our machine learning model didn't accept the text. It needs the input in the form of digits or matrix. So that we have to convert the text into the vector format. This is the reason we have used count vectorizer. There are multiple vectorizer. You can use term frequency, inverse term, term frequency, which is called TFIDF, and there are multiple more. So this is the vectorizer. Next we move to the logistic regression. I've already defined the solver, the number of maximum iteration and the class rate. I haven't defined the value of C because I'm going to tune that. The next thing is the pipeline. For that, I am going to make a pipeline using make pipeline function and I'm going to pass vectorizer and classifier. If you are not using a pipeline, and you have only one thing that is only classified, then you don't need to define logistic regression. You can only define it as C, the name of the parameter and its values. But right now we have a pipeline and sometimes it happens that there are more than one tunable algorithm in the pipeline. For example, just for the sake of simplicity, if we are applying the principal component analysis and we have to also tune the parameters of principal component analysis. So we have to define PCA with its parameter that is PCA underscore underscore and its parameter name and the values. So that our model now that when we are passing logistic regression, it is we are talking about logistic regression classifier and we are when we are talking about PCA by the key we came to know that which algorithm we need to tune. This is the reason of the defining this logistic regression name. Next we apply the grid search and we pass the pipeline to the grid search. The parameter grid, we also pass the parameter grid. Number four, which is cross validation, we set it to five. The reason is that the reason is that it split our training data frame into five parts and it train four part out of five part and test on the fifth part. And this, it, this process is repeated five times until all of our fold are tested once and it will provide us the best parameters which yield in the best result. We have used scoring as F1 macro. The reason to use F1 macro is that our data set is imbalanced and F1 metric is a good evaluation criteria for the imbalanced data set. If our data set is balanced, we can use accuracy for our scoring metric. Then I'm going to fit the grid search. And the grid search is, is returning the best score and the best parameter. Let me tune the and I can see the accuracy here. Actually, I have already 
run this code so you can see the existing display output already but let run the code and see the updated values of the parameter and the best code okay we can see that using a c inverse which is c is basically the inverse of regularization strength using c value as one we can get an accuracy uh, an f1 score of 70 percent now we need to we need to train this model again and i will explain in a minute that why we are going to train this model again i've defined a classifier as logistic regression solver as lbfgs and the value of c is one which i can take from here if i can show you the value of tune parameter you can see it will return me one so i'm passing the value of c as one the maximum number iteration as 500 and the class weight as class weight the rest of parameter remain the same the second thing i'm uh, right now the input is text so i'm defining a count factorizer and i am fitting the count factorizer separately on the training data frame and on the test data frame when i'm fitting on the training data frame i have to use fit transform and when i am fitting on the test data frame i have to use the transform method if i apply the fit transform method on the test data frame then my vocabulary is different in the training and test data frame so i have to make the vocabulary same in the test data frame which is actually in the training data frame so i'm going to run this again and now i'm going to fit the classifier on my training vector which i have calculated here and i'm also passing the training data frame label so that i can get the i can train the model i can also i'm also going to predict the model by passing the test vector and now i'm going to plot i'm going to print the classification report the classification report accept two things it accept the actual or ground truth labels or the predicted label you can see that the accuracy is 75 percent but the f1 score is 71 percent which is quite similar to the we have seen in the grid search technique or the fine tuning technique in the next part we can see that how we can save this model and how we can load this model back again